In this presentation, I'll be discussing the forms of difference that appear in metal culture and scholarship, which have I, I have identified and classified as part of my doctoral research and into the underlying semiotics of heavy metal. I intend to show how the various forms of difference are interlinked and can be said to form somewhat of a continuum with each form progressively intensifying in its difference. I will refer to metal sociologists and psychologists alongside the more philosophical approaches favoured by black metal theorists. Difference is not just an important concept for metalheads with our aversion to norms and proud belonging to alternative culture, it's also a crucial concept for philosophers, particularly those of the later 20th century, the same milieu from which metal first emerged in the late 60s. It's worth remembering that the emergence of metal was not an initial reaction to the culture of conformity prevalent in American society during the 1950s, but rather asserts difference in the face of ostensible difference. It is the ever-shifting fashions and fads of the 60s youth counterculture to which metal is arguably initially opposed. Clearly, we will need to introduce authenticity discourses to further examine that moment, perhaps in the forthcoming discussion. We will, how, we will start, however, with the simplest and broadest kind of difference identified in metal, alt alterity or otherness or mere difference. The sense of being away from, being mistrustful of, wishing to escape from, or not identifying with society and its norms has been identified by the majority of metal scholars. Both Weinstein and Walser related the valuing of outsider statuses in metal to its fascination with power, which for both is a core expression of the culture. But this is not simply an identification with a big other, a powerful force which positions you within its own framework, like uh, an employer or a government. Rather, the type of other which commands respect in metal is typified by its own being prohibited, excluded or rejected, but it still remains powerful, such as the allure of magic, pre or anti-Christian religion, or simply the otherness of experiencing very loud guitar noises in comparison to the sonic palettes given by the rest of the musical world. These symbols of other power are constantly communicated in heavy metal music, art, discourse, and so on. Alterity encompasses more than being or feeling different, though. We should ask where this feeling of difference comes from. Arnett, a psychologist and metal outsider, a non-metal scene participant, argued that alienation from society is what typifies metalheads, moving away from the power-centric readings of Weinstein and Walser, and arguably towards a more directly politicized interpretation. In extreme metal, difference takes on an accentuated value in the form of obscurity, an otherness which itself is difficult to locate. Khan Harris, amongst others, has noted that obscurity for its own sake is valued within the scene, which takes on a distinct musical form in the vocal screen, which denies the listener access to the lyrics unless they take the additional action of reading them. Black metal theory furthers this fetishizing of obscurity with its theory fiction form, complex literary and philosophical allusions, and imminent critiques. Clifford Napoleon emphasizes the importance of difference within metal culture and scholarship themselves. Quote, metal's margins are metal's attitude, its philosophy, and its path to the future. The study of metal and marginalization is the lens through which we can conceive of that future. This reflexive approach, which considers metal like the hegemonic forces it revolts against, as having a core and a periphery of difference, wherein some metal is more symbolically preser pre uh, preservative and some more radical, is a partial inspiration for this presentation. Once one arrives at a sense of difference, perhaps driven by alienation from society, this position has the potential to harden into something more incisive. Social criticism has long been associated with metal, all the way back to Black Sabbath's debut, with tracks like Wicked World, through to the extreme realism of grindcore, to use Liam D's expression. Topics of particular interest have included capitalist injustice, the horrors of war, technological surveillance, environmental destruction, and individual liberty. With the notable exceptions of grindcore and some thrash metal, Metal musicians have tended to use allegory and narrative to construct their critiques of society rather than bluntly stating them, which has drawn considerable interest from scholars. Ryan Moore holds a particularly skeptical perspective on this approach, arguing that the demonic entities which stand in for political power in metal songs 
engage in a process of reification, effectively mystifying politics while disempowering the listener rather than attempting to explain the world through music. Berger's investigations into the Akron death metal scene revealed a deeply critical and politically aware worldview amongst its participants, while also pointing to a crucial issue that arises out of alienation. The one can be politically conscious without acting on those principles, withdrawing one's time and labor into the metal community instead. So does this mean that the criticisms leveled by metal artists are just performative, a load of hot air that make the world seem more complex and terrifying rather than less? I would disagree and instead suggest that yes, alienation on the part of metal fans and musicians has led to their disengagement with partisan politics in many cases, but this does not entail complete disempowerment. Instead, metal has used their mutual and far reaching criticisms of the world as a means to separate themselves from the social and political norm from which they originally arise and cannot be fully disentangled. This ultimate ambiguity is held in tension through the development of the metal community itself. It is at this point that transgression emerges as a natural extension of criticism. The transgressor takes action into their own hands and directly contravenes norms, standards or laws that warranted critique from metalers. Transgressive practices in metal are many and varied, hedonistic excess, long hair, denim and leather, screaming, distortion, gore, and the violence associated with the hell that scene are just a few cursory examples. Transgression acts as a direct, tangible affront to the targets of metal's criticism, which heightens and furthers the culture's outsider status, especially in more conservative or religious cultures. In this way, the transgressive metaller is able to engage with dialectics of social authority and power, even in individually powerless circumstances. Carl Harris, although not the first metal scholar to at least mention transgression, was instrumental in asserting its primacy in metal and identifies it as one of two forms of scenic capital or what we might know as clout. He draws on Bataille's linkage between transgression, sex and death alongside Kristeva's account of the abject to argue that extreme metal culture in particular has an obsession with transgression. It is, quote, excessive, testing and breaking boundaries invoking the joys and terrors of formless oblivion within the collective while simultaneously bolstering feelings of individual control and potency. Andrew Cope suggests that transgression runs to the core of metal music too, noting the ways in which Black Sabbath challenged the norms of British, British blues and rock on their first albums in doing so spawning new musical codes. We should therefore note that transgression, the act of breaking boundaries, contains the potential for creativity. Eventually, the drive for difference and the revulsion towards institutional norms may be instilled to the point of a metal adopting a more explicitly negative approach. Negative in the sense of negation or opposition, and negative in the sense of adopting negative iconography such as Satanism, world destruction, misanthropy, suicide, and so on. As a subgenre which was intended by its creators to be darker than any before, Black metal is particularly known for its focus on negation as a lyrical and musical theme. Scott Wilson, one of the most for, one of the foremost black metal theorists, suggests that the musical negativity of the unintelligible scream and lo-fi production directly correlates the social practices of the culture. Quote, one can see that insofar as black metal is an effect of discourse, it is a discourse that exacerbates the problem of the social bond through refusing comprehensibility by excoriating voice and language in sonic aggression. Yet it is precisely through such sonic axesis that the social bond is negatively sustained. It is in the most destructive and negative musical and practical acts that Karn Harris's transgressive scenic capital is most clearly realized, such as the Helvet violence indicating the value of negation within metal. At most, negation can become totalizing, acting as the prime constituent of a metaler's identity, that they are opposed to everything in the manner of DSBM artists such as Thas Thur, quote, I don't want to be where I am or anywhere for that matter. Whether we can fully trust such statements remains an open question, given that many metal artists do not choose to commit suicide. But Rousseau suggests that negation may actually be another practical tool. Quote, decay as a conceptual tool would be a possible route for a being attempting to evade the false singularity of its consciousness, to rot univocally in a Deleuzean sense, that is to rot as perpetual difference. It is here 
and a pure or perpetual difference, the metal ultimately, finally, coalesces around. Whereas negation, even of existence itself, still relies on taking an oppositional stance, chaos suggests a more dispassionate relationship with the world, reveling in its mayhem, but aside from this attitude shift, the two are very closely aligned. In her seminal study, Weinstein identifies chaos alongside the Dionysian as the core thematic impulse in metal culture. Quote, chaos is used here to refer to the absence or destruction of relationships, which can run from confusion through various forms of anomaly, conflict and violence to death. The discourse on chaos in heavy metal lyrics includes interest in disorder, conflict, opposition and contradiction. It incorporates images of monsters, the grotesque, mayhem and disaster. It speaks of injustice and of resistance, rebellion and death. This focus on disorder and conflict at every level summarizes the previous forms of difference I have mentioned and suggests that difference in itself has a significant meaning to metalers. This is notable for the reasons I alluded to in the introduction. Deleuze, a philosopher who wrote during and heavily influenced the countercultural era, privileges difference as an ontological fundamental, a core aspect of existence, alongside intensity, another typifying feature of metal. Bogue explores extreme metal from a Deleuzean perspective, showing how the genre focuses on radical, intense states of difference and transformation, most obviously in gory death metal, where one turns from human into viscera. I suggest that further linkage between the forms of difference and chaos explored in metal and philosophical difference should be established with a special reference to studies of postmodernity. This condition, within which metal emerged in the late 60s, is typified by a ceaseless process of transformation within certain areas of society, such as pop culture, fashion and consumer goods, and an utter stagnation or regression in other areas of society, such as economic equality, public service provision and civic engagement. Heavy metal, conversely, is known for its cultural preservationism, revering and developing upon its originators, maintaining a uniform-like fashion style for 50 years, but we are also drawn to the most radical forms of difference imaginable. I would go further than Robert Walser, who says that heavy metal explores the other, everything that hegemonic society does not want to acknowledge, the dark side of the daylit enlightened adult world. Heavy metal is, or wishes to become, the other. <laughs>